Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, three wines today from a place called Domaine de Grand Maine uh, in the Côte de Duras, which is, um, if you know Bergerac, it's around that area. Use a lot of the same grapes that they do in Bordeaux. So all these three wines are uh, based on Merlot and the two Cabernets. Let's just set in. Uh, first one I've got is 2012 uh, Merlot Cabernet. Let's give it a whirl. Well, it's got a little bit of, um, I, I don't know whether, whether it, there were bits of the, the, the vintage that got rather warm. Uh, there's a, like a toffee character that comes through. Also a slightly uh, roasted, um, as, if, as if some of the fruit got, got quite ripe. There's this uh, warm, ever so slightly jammy berry, but then there's a fresher black currant. Um, and yeah, there's like a bit of black fruit, dark black fruit, and a bit of red fruit freshness as well to balance it. It smells, smells okay. Yeah, some leafy freshness, um, maybe a little touch of tobacco in there with the uh, the red and black fruit. It's it's decent enough. It's yeah, fair. What I call fair enough wine, and um, yeah, let's see whether uh, these next two Cuvée Prestige. I think. Um, you can probably tell from the labels that uh, uh, one of them is bottled and one of them oh so one of them is is labeled ready to go and one of them is not labeled to go so um both uh, um I, I think similar grape varieties in the blend uh, again not sure of the percentages i'll see if i can find out for you uh, but first is the cube prestige 2011 a year older but it's had more time in oak um, and uh, one of the ways in which that's coming through is this is a uh, smoky bacon type of character. Some some coopers, uh, their barrels have a particular character that uh, that ends up in the wine when it's young. It's funny, it sort of seems to uh, dissipate quite a bit as, as the wine gets older. But for the moment, I get that uh, it's quite a strong smoky bacon imprint. Fruit-wise, it feels like there's a richer, plumper, plummier character here compared with the uh, uh, the previous one. It feels like it's going to be a bit more dense, a bit more concentrated. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, a, a bit. Um, well, it should be higher class. It's called Prestige. It should be good. And it's a richer, rounder, um, softer. It is no, soft is not quite the right word. Um, it's funny. It doesn't feel like it's trying quite as hard as the previous one. The previous one, I got that little edge of. Um, uh, burnt baked fruit. Here, I don't know whether they've pruned it for lower yields, but it feels like it's more weight, more concentration, maybe it's older vines, uh, but uh, there's just something here uh, that feels like it's it's not trying as hard as the previous one, uh, but it has extra confidence, it has extra class in the first place. So um, there's a freshness about it, but there's a richness. Um, and there's this a slightly leafy tobacco edge going through it all. Uh, it's aging very nicely. It's, it feels, uh, yes, it's approachable now. There's still a bite of tan tannin in there. Um, so it feels like yeah, if you want to, you could uh, happily leave it for a few more years. Uh, me, I would, um, well, it's 2011. I'd probably, uh, if I had six bottles, I'd drink two this year and see how they were and then uh, see if, if it looks like it's still going strong then one a year uh, for the next four years and uh, probably regret it when I got to bottle number six and think actually it's still got a bit of life ahead of it it's probably a good 10 year wine have another slug I like that let's see um, what the 2010 like uh, now if uh, Cote de Duras is anything like Bordeaux 2010 is considered a finer vintage than 2011 uh, but of course um, some people uh, make better wines in off vintages and um, let's see whether this is one of them or whether they, it's gone with the, what the vintage charts would succeed would uh, suggest not succeed well, if you'd asked me uh, the age difference between these two, I'd have put it at much more than a year. This one feels, well, it smells very soft, mature, uh, almost a figgy warmth about it. Some of those leafy, uh, leathery, uh, leafy tobacco characters that uh, were on the previous one are here, but they're here uh, in, um, they're, they're more prominent. Uh, it still doesn't feel like it's falling apart, but um, it, this, this, whereas the previous one felt like a wine that had quite a, a lot of life ahead of it, this feels like a wine that is at its peak, and I want to, uh, well, from the smell at least, I want to uh, really be setting into it uh, sooner rather than later. I better try it, haven't I? Well, I don't know whether there was something going on, a, a difference in the um, what was what was happening in the cellar, but this one feels far more old-fashioned. There's a little bit of um, Britannomyces here that's slightly drying out the uh, the flavours. On the previous one, um, it had this that new oak imprint. Um, 
uh, that made me think, hang on, have they renewed rather a lot of the barrels and got rid of some of the older, maybe slightly uh, more suspicious barrels. Here, I like the flavours, but then there is that um, classic Brett thing of um, the tannins uh, just going that little bit dry and the fruit feels over mature. Um, so I think that yes, 2010 was probably a better vintage. It feels like the, the fruit quality here was um, uh, certainly very good, but I prefer the 2011 of, the, of these as a wine. Uh, and I, I certainly put my money on that rather than the 2010 for the, uh, uh, for the future. So interesting set of three wines, uh, but the 2011 Cuvée Prestige is the one that uh, I would like to drink. But given that, that slight, uh, uh, not gawky oak, but that, 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 uh, that presence of the oak where it was just rather forward, rather prominent, I'd slosh it in a decanter, leave it for a couple of hours, and I think it'll be all the better for that. See you soon.